and welcome to the second lesson in the series on software. During our first lesson, we learned that loading software on a computer is like giving a computer a brain. We also learned that software is categorized into two main categories, application software and system software. Today we will explore system and application software in more detail. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to Distinguish between system software and application software. Describe system software and application software. And state briefly the purpose of each. Archie, you don't look very happy today. What's the problem? Hi Dawn. Well, we were also excited today about the brand new computers that were delivered at my school. But it turns out these brand new machines are broken. Are you sure? Have you tried to turn them on? Yes, but all they do is beep and make a few noises and then they give us an error message saying something about a system disk. That sounds as if they could actually be working. How's that possible? Remember in the hardware lessons, we discussed how the computer booted up. Well, the sounds you hear tell us that the computer is booting. So if you hear these sounds and the computer gives a system disk error message, it could possibly be that it needs software installed. It probably needs system software that has not been installed yet. The type of software it needs would depend on the exact message you got. Do you remember what the message said? It said something like non-system disk or disk error. Well, the machine is basically telling you that it can't find any system software installed on it. What is system software anyway? Do you remember during the first software lesson, we briefly discussed the differences between system software and application software. We learned that system software is software that is needed to support, control and run the computer. System software includes device drivers, the operating systems and the graphical user interface, sometimes referred to as the GUI. The GUI allows a user to interact with a computer and all the peripherals, such as printers, connected to the computer. When you turn on the computer and it loads up, it is normally the graphic user interface that you see. If you look at this computer over here, you will see what I mean. I see, so this GUI is part of system software. That's right. Actually, it is loaded with the operating system. So system software is a term referring to any computer software whose purpose is to run the computer system. An operating system is part of the system software category. Yes, it is. An operating system allows hardware devices to talk to each other. It also controls how hardware devices work. The operating system is one of the most important programs that run on your computer. Every computer must have an operating system. Operating systems perform basic tasks, such as recognizing input from the keyboard and sending output to the display screen. It also keeps track of files and directories on the hard drive and controls peripheral devices such as monitors. Some examples of operating systems are Unix, Windows and Linux. Let me show you what a computer looks like without an operating system installed on it and then you can tell me if your school machines are giving similar messages. This computer does not have an operating system installed. Let's turn it on and have a look at what happens. Listen very carefully to hear if the machine sounds as if it is booting up. Booting up is a term used to describe the loading and startup of the operating system when the computer is switched on. You will also notice that the boot up screen is being displayed. Now look at the message that has come up. Non-system disk or disk error. This message is displayed whenever the computer can't find an operating system on the hard drive. You might also get this message if you have left a stiffy disk in the stiffy drive. This is because the machine has been set to read the stiffy drive first and so it is looking for but not finding the operating system on the stiffy drive. And that is the exact message that's coming up on our school machines. So what do we do? Well, the computer does not seem to have any system software installed on it and can therefore not boot up any further than this. Let me show you how an operating system is installed. 
Installing means loading the software. Here's a CD of the Windows operating system. Let's insert the CD into the CD-ROM drive and reboot the machine. Look at the message that appears. It says, press any key to boot from CD. I can just press a key and the first part of the installation will begin. A setup program helps you install the software. This program inspects the hardware to ensure that we have no hardware compatibility problems before we install the operating system. You will see that a license agreement appears for you to read. This software license is essential to protect companies from piracy. The only way to continue with this installation is to agree to the conditions specified. Once we have agreed to the licenses, there are a few basic questions that have to be answered. These questions are about the organization you work for as well as the product code. These questions are important because they ensure that the software is legal. Once all the questions have been answered, the second part of the installation will begin. Watch as the installation progresses and you will see it telling me the percentage of the installation that has been completed. When it reaches 100%, the first part of the installation is complete. Right, the first part of the installation is completed. Now the machine will reboot. All the hardware has been checked and the software part of the installation will now begin. All the necessary files will be copied onto the computer. This should take about half an hour to complete. OK, the installation is finished. Let's see if we still get the error message when we restart the computer. Can you see that the computer is busy with the same hardware checks we saw before the system software was loaded? If you remember, it was at this point we got the error message, non-system disk or disk error. You can see the error message is not appearing and the computer is trying to load the system software. You can now enter your password and Windows will load. Okay, so now I can work normal, I can type letters, do school projects. No, actually you can't. I can't? No, not yet. You have forgotten something. If we select Start, then Programs on this computer, you will see we have very few programs or options to select. The fact is, we have no application software loaded on this machine yet. Why is that? Well, Windows comes with a few basic utilities and programs that might be useful when you first load the machine, like a calculator that you can see here and a very basic word processor. These utilities are designed to do very basic tasks. If you need to perform a more specialized task, like when Salai used Excel to complete her school project during the hardware lessons, then you would have to load application software on the computer. So, as you can see, at the moment we don't have any application packages such as a spreadsheet or a word processor installed on this computer. That's right, we still need to load application software on this machine. As we saw during the first software lesson, application software is a term we use to describe programs that you either buy or develop to solve a specific problem or perform a particular task. Some examples of application software would be Microsoft Word and Encarta. Do you remember during the hardware lesson you had to type a letter? Yes. Well, the program you used was called a word processor. It was an application software package because it was used to perform a specific task. I think I've got it. System software, like Windows, is used to boot the computer and take it to the first level. But Windows does not have any packages to help you perform specific tasks like an encyclopedia. But it does, however, have basic utilities and programs that can be used until you load an application software that can be used for specialized tasks. An application software is software that is normally purchased to perform particular tasks. Correct. Let's play a game. I will show you two different software packages. You see if you can tell me if they are application software or system software. Great. OK, let's start. I have a computer game here. Can you tell me if it is system software or application software? I would say it's application software because it has a specific purpose. 
What could that purpose possibly be? Fun, fun, fun. You're right. Games do fall into the application software category. What about this package over here? It's called Windows XP. I know. It's system software. Correct. Let's see what happens when we install this game onto the computer. We insert the CD into the CD-ROM drive. Look, it automatically starts the installation and asks me questions. This is because it has an auto-install option on the CD, which automatically calls up this installation wizard you see here. Now, as you can see, the game has almost finished loading. Once it is finished, we can check to see if it is working OK. Let's see if it works. When we choose Start from the menu bar and then Programs, we see our game is now on the menu. We can now follow exactly the same procedure for any other application software that needs to be installed on this computer. As you have seen, application software can only run if system software has been installed. Remember that application software runs within the system software environment. All right, so I suppose a way to sum up the relationship between system software and application software is that system software uh, runs your computer and allows different hardware components to communicate with each other. And then application software runs your business and allows you to create school projects. It will also do graphics, accounting functions, and mathematical calculations. That is correct. And now for your task. Find five different types of software packages. Categorize this software into application or system software. Briefly describe the purpose of each of the packages you have found. Thank you for joining us for this lesson. Don't forget to visit our website for more information. Till next time, take care.